in Genesis 18, 19, as we have said, it says, For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken. I said, obedience is the access to the blessing of God. As parents, it is our utmost God-given responsibility to encourage our children to fear God. You might think they don't know or they cannot understand, but they can. For the scripture says, they are angels, behold the face of the Lord. So they have their angels before God. And what is important, therefore, is as children, therefore, we teach them at home how to pray, how to read the Bible, and how to study the Word of God. When you do that, it's going to give you access to your God-given inheritance. And if you don't, you, are going to, you will not be able to access the blessing that God has prepared for you. You see, he said that the Lord may bring to Abraham, you put your name there, what he has spoken to him. Don't say it doesn't concern you. It does. Somebody heard from the Lord concerning three years beginning from 2024 to 2027. It's going to be a turbulent time on the face of the earth. But the good thing is, for those who know the Lord, it's going to be a good time for them. It's going to be like Israel and the land of Goshen in Egypt. Amen. You know, you need to read that to find out what it means. In the midst of the adversity, in the land of Egypt. That was a land, an area that was speared. And it's called Goshen. So this is no joke. It's about you getting serious with God. Stop playing anky panky, thinking that God doesn't see you. He sees you. He sees you. Hallelujah. Time has gone, I think. Let me, <laughs> let me start the message, please. That's the word of God for us. He said, he that has ears shall hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Some say, ah, well, God destroyed the world. As it, is, as it was in the day of Noah, so will it be at the return of the Lord <clears throat> as well. So, let's fear him. Let's fear him. Don't believe other people that are just telling lies. By now you know if I'm telling lies or not. So, I follow the Lord and I want you to follow the Lord. Let's just go straight into the word of God. Let's well, observe every protocol. The protocol that is of importance to me is the reverence of God. And that's what I've given you. If you are going to come to church, come to church on time. It shows how you fear God. See, the most unfortunate thing is the people that are in God's presence and yet they did not express the presence of God. How was it that out of the mob, 
that really surrounded Jesus. It was the woman with the issue of blood that was recorded, that touched Jesus, and she was healed. What happened to the majority of people that were there? That tells you that just being here doesn't mean you are here. <laughs> if you are here, be here. Let God know that your attention is on him. You will see that he will touch you. He will touch you. And once he touch you, you don't need to wait until you are given a microphone as he touch you. <laughs> if he touch me, I will know. I will jump, I will scream. Because you don't know what I've been carrying under my armpit for many years. You don't know what I've been carrying in my tummy that they've done the scan. But suddenly I felt the heavy, the heavy load every time I stand up. And now he's gone. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. That's how disease just disappears. Because it will answer to no other name but Jesus. It's true. It is often said in an old proverbial saying, every day is for a thief. But one day is for the owner. In other words, you might be getting away with misdeeds and misbehavior, thinking no one sees you or no one arrested you. But the day is coming, as they always come, when there will be reckoning for all the misdeeds, including the ones you thought no one knew. He said, don't break the speed uh, camera. Don't do that. Don't jump the speed camera. OK. I'm a good driver. I'm a good driver. OK, that's fine. But one day, you will know who is a safe and better driver. Turning point can be initiated by God, especially when the one who holds to know better has crossed the line. That even God was annoyed about his behavior, that God has to put an end to the same opportunity that was abused. Be it far from me, says the Lord, for them that honor me, I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. A disgrace is the abuse of grace. Do not abuse the grace God has given you to be in that office or to be in that role. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, that's the one we've just read. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. From another translation, it says, Far be it from me, those who honor me, I will honor. But those who despise me shall be disdained. Do you despise God? It is not Christianity when you are pretending. It is not Christianity when you are dishonest. It is not Christianity when you are dubious. He doesn't have the spirit of God. Then why are you doing it? And you keep wondering, why has God not answered my prayer? How can God answer that kind of a prayer? The prayer that God will answer for a sinner is the prayer of repentance. I'm sorry for all my ways. 
Don't say I didn't tell you. A disgrace is the abuse of grace. Don't disgrace grace. All you need is to walk upright. And nothing shall be hidden from you. Psalm 84, verse 11. Psalm 84, verse 11. For he gives grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. What does it mean to walk upright? To walk upright is not to be dubious. To walk upright is to be straightforward. To walk upright is to be plain. There is no, you know, you know, you know, no, no more. How many you know, you know, do you see in the Bible about God? And if you are following God, why is it you know, you know? Why can't you call a spade a spade? Why do you call a spade a, a shovel? Are they the same? I'm saying this so that we can all finish well. And we will finish well. The upright will receive good things from God. That's what he says. Say nothing, no good thing will he withhold from them that do what? Walk upright. If you make up your mind to be like Christ, to walk upright, nothing good, no good thing will God withhold from you. Where is the source of good thing? From God. All good and perfect gift come down from above. From who? The Father of light, isn't it? With whom there is no variableness, neither shadow nor turning. That's God. There's no, you know, great, no, no. That's been this genius, this ingenious. The people you didn't know that you helped, the person you met stranded and you took in your car, the stranger you gave a helping hand when they needed it most. Jesus said to the parable of the Good Samaritan, and then turned to his followers and said to them, go and do likewise. Luke chapter 10, verse 37. Luke chapter 10, verse 37. It is a good life also because you have made the lives of other, others good. That's the kind of life that God has called us to live. Don't take advantage of people. The reason why God has put you in that position is not because you have any sterling qualities. Just think about that. You are born of a woman the same way they too were born of somebody. But God favored you. So why will you use that position to take advantage of people? Think about that. How then do you want God to help you? Many people are in the church. They have not heard the real gospel of Christ. They're just hearing sermons. That doesn't change their lives. The day you begin to hear the word of God that will change your life, that's the real gospel. And it's only for those people that really want to follow Jesus. Are you with me? Don't be too quiet on me. <laughs> Are you with me? Apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. 
And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? Who is he that will do you any harm if you intentionally live a life of goodness? Regardless of what people are doing to you, you don't pay them back the same way. You decide to do what is good. As if it doesn't matter. And you cry. You cry at home. You wonder what kind of a friend is this, but you, 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 you hesitate to say anything bad about people. Even though they are the ones saying it to you. God says you become untouchable. Unless if you don't believe the scripture. How many people believe the scriptures? That's it. If you believe it, just read it. He said, who will harm you if you be follower of them that do what is good? So I make it my duty not to copy any pastor or bishop. I just copy Jesus. I'm telling you the truth. That's it. Because at the end, <laughs> they will call me. <laughs> pastor, well done. Let's check the book. Sir, are you with me? Let's check the book. Is your name there? Ah. Ah. This one is not that God has been serving you. Mm -hmm. Said, if your name is not in the book of life, it's gone. No, you are done for, forever. Mm -mm. I don't want to be like that. I come to church, so. And one of the other, so. Is your name in the book of life? If it's not there, ah. Where, where will you go? That's the end. That will not be your portion. And that is why we started that same way. Did I know that this would happen? No, I didn't know, but God knew. And so you could see the message, which I have not even told you, the title. Okay, we'll get there. You know that these days, a pastor must be jack of all trades. Technical, toilet, uh, gardening, usher, uh, prayer. Yes. That's what a pastor, a drummer, isn't it, brother? Yeah. He will do everything. So you cannot say that, oh, no, I don't want to go to the toilet. You don't want to clean the toilet. Eh. Hey. You just want to, you think you just hold the microphone. Okay, let's go to the high street to preach. Oh, no, I don't have time, it's too cold. Ah, okay. It doesn't work that way. That's where we get the grace from. The grace to do so many things. Everyone is following someone. Or some principles of life at one point or the other. Just ask yourself, what is the most influence? Influential, or who is the most influential person in my life? Where well, you can say your husband, or you can say your wife, if you are fortunate enough to say that one. But some people will not say that one. They will just say some other things. Ask yourself. Because the moment you wake up, right, before you say good morning to anyone, you find out that the one that influences you most in life is what is his bidding that you carry. You always do the bidding of that person. If it is God, you will see that the moment you open your eyes, what will you do? You talk to God. This is not just, ah, Father, thank you. Thank you. Ah, 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 ah. This is the one you pour out your heart to him. Because he that watches over his strength does not sleep, nor slumber. He didn't sleep at all, he was watching over you. Aha, uh -huh. what about that? And what about the Bible as well? If it's so influential in your life, God, you will open the Bible, you will hear the word of God into your spirit, man. I think it's me that is standing in front of the thing. We'll get there. Hello, are you getting something? Don't worry, that one is just, that one is just, uh, the Lord is taking care of that one, don't worry. 
Just focus on this. So if you follow that which is good, you'll be free from harm. So make it your point of duty. You will not pay evil for evil. You always find the good in people. You want to help them without thinking that they have to pay you. What would they pay you for? Is that not what you are in that position for? Can't you do anything without expecting something from people? Hello? Ah, thank you, Lord. But the evil one and the wicked one will come under harm. That's what it says. Romans 1 verse 18. Romans 1 verse 18. For the wrath of God is upon the evil ones. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So don't tell lies with the truth. <laughs> when he said, those people that hold the truth in unrighteousness, can you say mismatch? You carried your Bible. But you pretend. You don't read it. In most cases, you do the opposite of what God has said. If man doesn't see you, God sees you. You know it. Devil knows it. And it will just be pampering you. Well done, well done. You will pray, you will fast. Your, 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 your fasting has become hunger strike. Why? Because the heaven is short. May your heaven not be short. But these are the things that is crippling some of us that will say we are believers because we believe to some extent when it's convenient, but when it's no longer convenient, I back out. That is no genuine lifestyle. That is hypocrisy. If Jesus were to have done that, where would you and I be? He didn't do that. He went through it all, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, <clears throat> despised the shame and deal the cross. At times you have to despise what people say. Yes, they didn't send you there. They didn't know how you, how you got there. They didn't know how you married. They didn't know how you got the job. Why would they now be judging you for this now? Amen. Let your purpose be right. Walk upright. And you will see that nothing good will God withhold from you. Don't kid with the, root, with the truth. The word of God is the truth. John 17. 17. Everyone, Jesus said, who is of the truth, hears my voice. John 18, 37. John 18, 37. Where you find it hard to say the truth, brothers and sisters, that is not the right job for you. <laughs> Did you hear that? Because you'll be stifled. They won't allow you to leave. L-I-V-E. They won't. Why? Because you belong to the truth. You want to say the truth. But you are surrounded by people that don't like the truth. Before they change your destiny, won't you just leave? Jesus Christ warned us and said, Take it that your light 
does not become darkness. That's why you see some people, they've been known as big preachers. Suddenly, they just became homosexuals. And then you wonder, where did they miss it? I was even told somebody just died, one of the bishops. And he was the one now questioning God. So, it's back to who influences you in life. Is it the word of God or the word of man? And if it's the word of God, let it be the word of God. You can't have it 50-50. No, you can't have it 50-50. Is that you have it or you don't have it? And that's the whole essence. If anyone follow me, he will not walk in darkness, but shall receive the light of life. That light of life is in us. It shines even in the midst of darkness. That's why the job you did not apply for, they located you. Because the light will speak of you. When Joseph found out, uh, even one of his, that even at his workplace, truth was not in supply. He left the work. Remember? Genesis 39, verse 12. Genesis 39, verse 12. It is only what a man sow that he can reap. You cannot reap what you did not sow. Galatians 6, 7. So it is God's will for you and I to enjoy good days. But it comes, it comes with a price. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. 1 Peter 3.10. You see that? The key to longevity, the key to longevity in life is to control your tongue. Don't just say it because you want to say it. See, no matter how upset I've learned from experience, no matter how upset pastor will be, as you see today, I cannot say something rude or negative to you. Why? Because a man of God is supposed to bless, not to curse. So I've been warned not to say that. But you, if, you, if you know me properly, you will know that oh, I'm annoyed. But not that I'll lose what I will say. Do you understand what I'm saying? So of course, it's natural to be annoyed. Bible says in Ephesians 3, be you angry, 27, but don't sin. Hallelujah. So don't get uh, deceived by all these things. Your tongue can cut short your life if you talk loosely. Ask from Ananias, Acts chapter 5. Ananias and Sapphira, husband and wife in crime. What is wrong in saying the truth? Whatever will put you in an uncomfortable situation from saying the truth is not from God, it's from the devil. It says sin lies at the door and his desire is for you. See, sin also have a desire to catch you. He said, but you must rule over it. God said, you must rule over it. Genesis 4, verse 7. Genesis 4, verse 7. I have to stop today's message which I have titled, Living the Good Life of Christ. Living the Good Life of Christ. Whilst it remained 
He says, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, the land, was it not in thy own power? Acts chapter 5 verse 4. Acts chapter 5 verse 4. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So that tells me that whatever has not settled in your heart cannot control your life. You get that? If you don't allow it to settle in your heart, it has no power to control your life. Be careful, therefore, what you from today will permit in your heart each moment that you wake up. Because if you don't want it to control you, deal with it right there. Because his desire is to get you. But you must rule over it. Hallelujah. Keep your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23. Keep your heart with all diligence. Another translation says, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from it. Let us pray. Living the good life of Christ comes at a price. Some people are not interested in it. But I'm here for those who are interested. You've heard the word of God, please. I don't know where you are. I'm not God, but God has revealed to you. Let everybody close their eyes, please. Talk to God. In what ways have you been denying God his way? You know, when you know the truth and you are being forced or you are being, you are complying, you are agreeing, just like, just like Ananias and Sapphira agreed together to lie against the Holy Spirit. What have you been agreeing together? Who have you been agreeing together with to lie against God? And you think it doesn't matter? It matters. That is unbecoming as a follower of Christ. I want you to talk to him. Maybe that is what the devil is latching on and accusing you before God and say, see, see who is talking. See who calls himself or herself a Christian. Eh? Is that what they would, you should be doing? And you know it. So what are you going to do about it? Do you think God doesn't care about it? Or God has not seen it? What about that dubious lifestyle? Keeping another woman somewhere. Or keeping another man somewhere. Just because... Pastor did not know about it. What about God? What about those thoughts that controls you? Those thoughts that you know are not right. And those things you do when no one is there. What about God? Do you know God is there? How dare you? You say you love God and you are still doing those things. Talk to God. Just talk to him. I want you to live a good life of Christ. I want God to showcase you to the world. I want God to be proud of you. I want you to silence the mouth of the avenger. I want you to do what is right, to walk upright before God. Let's stand up on our feet. On to Jesus, I surrender. On to Him, I freely give. I will ever long. 
and trusting in his presence daily everybody say i surrender i surrender all i surrender oh, unto thee lord unto thee my blessed savior i Let him show you what you have yet to surrender. And as he shows you, take the box that you have surrendered. And if you have not, you cannot take that box. Otherwise, that will be in vain. Surrender that which he has shown to you. Just surrender that to him. Surrender that to him. And ask him to help you navigate the rest of the year. Ask him to help you navigate your way out of this situation. Ask him that it's only his will that you want in your life. Ask him that this luggage is too much, this burden is too much. Ask him that you would like to pass it over to him. Ask him for his help. The Bible says, cast your cares onto him, for he cares for you. Lord will bless you. Lord will bless you. If you are out there and you have not yet known the Lord as your master and savior, if you have not yet known Jesus as your Lord, it's not just saying Lord. He has to be the Lord from your heart. He has to control everything about you. You can't hide anything from him if he's indeed your Lord. Nothing is too small to talk about. Nothing is too insignificant to share with him. Your medical condition, he knows. Your marital situation, he knows. Your family situation, he knows. Your finances, he knows. Yes, the fear is that you don't want what has happened to you to happen to your children. He knows about it. That's why he's still keeping you. Why don't you share everything with him? Surrender yourself to him and ask him to give you a new heart and a new spirit. Talk to him. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. He has shown you what you are doing that is not acceptable, especially from you. Why don't you ask him I surrender this to you. Help me, Lord. I want to be saved. I love you. You know I love you. Put your love in my heart. Whatever it is that is not making me to follow you completely, it is sin from today. I receive grace to follow you completely. Talk to him. It's up to you. It's up to you. Whether you do it or you don't do it, it's up to you. Time will come when you will come back and say, I wish I have done this. I've never seen a man that regretted ever serving God. we have seen people that regretted for not serving God. Ask him to write your name in the book of life, that you want to live this good life of Christ. You want to have this life. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Ask him to write your name in the book of life. That this decision today 
shall be irrevocable. Your decision to follow Jesus, you will not change your mind anymore. Receive grace. Receive grace. The Lord will thank you. The Lord will bless you. We give you praise. In Jesus' holy and anointed name, we have prayed. Amen.